there's a couple of things that, that uh, are out there for our project called TAML that we'll take a look at to start things off here today. And, uh, and well, gosh, let me get the sound effect. Let me get the sound effect. And then? We'll, um, we'll get back into talking about Clip Talk and working on some of the back office services for this website that we're building that's going to make clips discoverable on Twitch in a social media format that mm, is kind of similar to TikTok. More on that when we get there because... Um, I've finished the loading script for loading and identifying new clips, but I want to move that out into a service bus so that we can repeat that sync process regularly and even a little bit of the update process that we're going to need on that. Then we can talk about algorithms because at that point, I believe the base functionality will be completed that we need for the website. Do, 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 do. Walking over to the code. Oh, hello. Um, so here we are. This is Tamil. Tamil is a project that we started kind of on a goof back at the beginning of the of the fall, September time frame. So we we laid out these concepts. We put together these ideas of what a tab annotated markup language would be. And here it is. GitHub.com slash C Sharp Fritz slash Tamil. If you're here on Twitch, you can click the GitHub repository just below. So this was the concept that we had, and we wanted to get in and make this a little bit easier, a little bit simpler to interact with, so that for those po people who did want an, a simple, easy for humans to read markup language for configuration or, or passing messages, you've got application Tamil that we can use for this. I see a couple questions coming up in the chat room. Let me... Um, let me take a second now that I've described what Tamil is and I'm going to drop that link into chat for you. There you go. Um, let me, and this is also working on this project is going to facilitate us getting to learn a little bit about building developer tools because we're going to, we're going to dig into all the different places that you define a markup language and how you interact with it. But I see a couple questions here. Let me just grab these and, um, uh, and see if we can answer some of these. I, there we go. So um, first question, it's a little bit off topic. It's a lot off topic from Ruiz Mari asks, should I wait for the Mac Pro 16 with the M1 chip or just buy the latest Mac Pro 16 for, well, what kind of development are you doing? What kind of development are you doing? So if you're doing mobile development, it's not gonna matter. If you're you're doing app development, of course you're doing application development. What kind of application development? Web, desktop, games, uh, uh, mobile app. What do you mean app development? App, everything's an app. So mobile, there we go. It doesn't matter. Um, it's going to be a question of how. When do you want to refresh your hardware? Um, do you want to refresh your hardware in three years? Do you want to refresh your hardware in five years? It's not clear how, what the um, what the commitment to Apple's M mobile chips is going to be over the long term. This is the first first year stepping out and using this this chip architecture. Are, are they going to be using it for a long period of time? Are they going to be committed to it for the next 10 years, 15 years? So if you were to get an existing Mac Pro, right? Mac, uh, you're, that, that, that isn't using the ARM architecture, you could be left out in the wake because of how Apple likes to cut things over and say, sorry, you need to buy new hardware. However, you could be on the other side of it and, and buy the new uh, Mac Pro laptop with the ARM chip and in two years they say, ah, that was a mistake. We're going back to x86, x64 architecture. So personally, I wouldn't be investing big money in one of their laptops right now. If you already have a laptop, I would continue using it. If you're interested in getting one of the ARM laptops, I wouldn't invest significant money. Um, I, I wouldn't be looking at, a, I mean, a good Mac Pro laptop, $2,500, $3,000. I, 
I wouldn't be American, of course. Um, I can only, I don't know the prices outside the States, so I'm speaking just for um, US dollars. I, I would lean towards it, um, it getting one of these smaller machines. If you, if you need a machine that uses the ARM architecture, I look at getting one of the smaller ones that you're not making a significant investment, but you have some opportunity looking forward. So, thank you for the question. The next one that I have here is from Thindall. Why is Tamil YAML better than JSON XML? I agree. This was my first question, too. Why is YAML better than JSON or XML? I don't know, but it's literally being used for everything. Every new technology that is springing up is using YAML, GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, um, Kubernetes. It, it, YAML is the hot new formatting language that folks are using. And, and it's not easy to read Shadow King. Um, it's, it's easy for a certain group of people that have a certain font size on a certain size screen. If any of those three are different for you, oh, and have a certain vision. Right, a certain level of vision. If you don't have the same vision qualifications as the folks that wrote it, it might as it it it, it might as well be written um, on the Rosetta Stone. You don't know what this thing is. It's some foreign language that you're going to have to translate. So, accessibility-wise, YAML is awful. And there's an article here about why they're not accessible. I'm not going to go into it. You can click that link and read it for yourself. It's it's easy to read for a class of folks. So, that's why I disagree with it. Neolashi. That's a question that we've gotten a little bit. Let me bring this one up. And I have a blog post that I can reference on this. Do Azure Functions support .NET 5 runtime? No, they do not. Azure Functions .NET 5. They do not. They're working on it. Um, it's going to take a little bit. You're going to end up having to rewrite and redeploy and re-architect a little bit. Um, they are going to be generally available in early 2021. That's the last that they've told us about this. So it's it's going to change architecture. You can you can run app service right now. You can run this on um, the app service has it deployed. The function runtime does not. The function runtime is not set up with this. So the function runtime sits on top of app service in order to run, reach in and fire the triggers appropriately. They're changing how this works because um, they're gonna run as a separate process. So you're gonna be able to deploy dependencies and whatnot differently. Um, there are ways to deploy Azure Functions so they run in a Kubernetes, in a Docker container. I wouldn't get into that. That Personally, I wouldn't get into that when you can run right on the runtime. It, it's coming. It's coming. It'll be there soon. So. All right. So, I have three pull requests sitting out here for Tamil. Let's take a look at these. Um, one going all the way back to November 22nd, one from the 28th from Burger B to refactor and rename the top level project. And another one adding a JVM parser for this. So there, there are concepts here that we've defined around what this looks like. Um, and right, the, the base definitions of what, what these are the .NET API. Let me go back to the articles. There's this test suite that define... Why isn't this... This should have been picked up and formatted as um, Markdown, but it didn't. Interesting. Um, key value pairs look like this. You have a contiguous element of alphanumeric text followed by a tab and a continuous block of alphanumeric text, uh, basically non-tab separated text, right? You can put special characters in there. But as soon as there's a carriage return, there's a new key value pair. And you can have any number of tabs between these. It doesn't matter, the runtime will ignore it. 
You can have a ra an array that is a key and indented below it are values that belong to that array. You can have multiple arrays in this way. You can have child key value pairs where you have a root that defines that there's an array and key value pairs after that. And one of those key value pairs can be itself an array. This way you can now build hierarchical references. So these were some of the initial definitions that we defined and we built out a test suite that says um, well, right, these are the definitions of standard documents that you could use. We added the ability for you to parse with .NET. We started down parsing with, with JavaScript. Somebody wrote an, a, um, a Python interpreter. We don't have documentation to go with this, but we do have, there is a Python interpreter that someone wrote that um, we'd look for somebody to step up and help maintain. Here it is. So there is Python interpreter to be able to parse and yeah, it just tried to scroll down my screen. Sorry about that. Sorry, doesn't work like that. It's a little bit different. So, um, I think he's as dumb as a sack of hammers. No, not really. Um, so let's let me put the project up information up here. Uh, let's call this uh, Tamil updates. Uh, service bus and algorithms. There we go. Um, so first thing I want to do is I want to take a look at, let's review uh, the open Tamil pull requests. There we go. Um, refactor uh, Clip doc, uh, clip syncing for service bus. And finally, um, I'd like to discuss uh, the discover algorithms for clip talk. There we go. So that's the agenda for today. Uh, you got to tell it which one to make active. There we go. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Yes, that was Fierce Kittens, um, imitating Natasha. So, yeah, I, I, I asked her to do that. She's gotten, um, there's, there, we've got a thing going back and forth where, um, I've done a couple voiceovers for her channel. And we thought it would be funny if she did another voiceover for over here. Um, we'll see about getting that in play. We have a converter here that, that was written by, uh, is this CG Leadall? That will use a simple string builder to convert from Tamil to YAML. Added three projects to a folder called YAML Writer Tamil. Dot net the actual converter unit test project a simple CLI to read a TAML file and console right line the YAML equivalent um, there's slight conflict in the solution file no problem that's easy to merge um, uh, this looks interesting um, I'm taking a look today on stream. Um, uh, perhaps this becomes part of a larger uh, YAML, uh, no, uh, Tamil command line utilities. Uh, yeah, utility project. Uh, app. All right. So let me put that comment in there. Let's take a look at what's here. 17 files changed. So a couple entries in the solution file. Fine. To define the new projects. So here's a unit test. When writer gives YAML, uh, should find three, three elements. And I'm guessing there's, there we go. Child arrays Tamil. Okay. 
when parsing sample one. So here's a sample document and it's looking to generate that YAML. Nice, okay, makes sense. So there's sample one, here's sample two. Oh yeah, these are some of those standard samples that I've written in the past for what TAML should look like. When writing YAML, uh, then should find arrays. So handling the various array interactions. When reading comments, yes. This is a comment, that works. So we, we added a rule that says comments start with a hash. Um, no problem there, and a CS proj with all the things. This is net core app three, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, program CS, read file, so, um, I think we take this in the way it is right now. Um, and I believe, did it have, did this actually get executed as part of an action? No, it did not. So we need to pull this in and make it part of an action, part of a git, part of the GitHub action, so that it runs the test that was written here, and we can we can push that into. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have a, a Tamil command line tool that we could run anywhere. So I think this is showing as draft. Uh, I don't. Draft, yes. Um, yeah, so... Um, um, request. Who is... Let me make sure I tag this person. CG lead all. Uh, CG lead all. Can you um, merge the uh, current solution file? And let's uh, turn this in, uh, into a .NET uh, global command. No, nah, let's not turn it into a .NET global command. And let's uh, set this up as the as a starting point for a uh, Tamil CLI. Yeah, ta YAML writer CLI, but. It, um, that uh, performs the various um, documentation format shifting and document manipulation. Epoch Varg just resubscribed for two months. Oh my god! Thank you so much, Epoch Epoch Varg. I appreciate the uh, the resub, and we're gonna make another donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. You see the link there in chat. Thank you so much for for the support great stuff um and coming up in march we're gonna have a minimal march uh event where we're gonna be spending a bit of time coding live on a raspberry pi 400 building some dot net uh applications working on blazer working working maybe with clip talk not sure exactly what the projects will be, but we're going to spend uh, about half the month on a Raspberry Pi 400 and about the other half of the month on a Google Chromebook. So working with just the command line tools, just the command line text editors, and being productive. So, um, all right. Uh, there's the comment back on that prod that pull request. That's great. Oh, you know what? I need. I should also add... Um, um, last item, um, let's get, uh, this unit test project included in the, uh, uh, GitHub action for .NET code. All right. Good stuff. Really like seeing that and let's keep them moving forward. Refactor and rename top level project. Let's take a look here. Remove .NET from project names. Yes. So this is this is a good point from Burger B here. The top level project for the for the .NET stuff is called Tamil.net. Well, if you're using the Tamil project with .NET, you don't need to know that it's 
Tamil.net. Because you're in .net, right? It's kind of redundant. So remove .net from the project names. Refactor code for new namespaces. So we don't need to carry around .net. It's just Tamil. Uh, make Tamil the top level namespace. Update the contributing markdown. Taking a shot at these in reference to these two issues. So rename the Tamil.net package. Remove the .net. Yeah. And the other one here is rename configuration.taml. Let's standardize Taml as the top level entry in the namespace and packages across languages. Makes perfect sense. So taking a look here, this is ready to merge. It's passed the tests. 48 files changed. Um, I'm gonna take a quick peek here at what's happened. Yeah, so removing this so it's just .NET slash Taml. Test.taml, we don't need to include .NET out there. So, and it looks like appropriate renaming here from configuration taml.net to taml.configuration. It's a big change, this is a big lift, but I think this is an important one. And uh, the unit test passed, so I am going to merge. So, right, this is one commit, yep. So. Uh, great work. Thank you for um, sending uh, for submitting this update. Great stuff. Hop in the cloud. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I've I've got paint on my fingers here, and it's annoying me. Um, so I'm going to close these two and reference 84. There we go. Yeah. Um, and we can close this. Uh, refactor and rename. Yeah, I thought I, I guess I didn't click into it. There we go. And that's already closed. Did I, did I not open 77? There we go. It's so reference there, closed. Done. Awesome. Great stuff. And uh, yeah, now it looks a little bit more like it belongs on .NET. Last pull request we're going to take a look at here is add a JVM parser. And this is, is this Lucalus sent this over, creating a first implementation of a Taml parser in Java. Java library is based on the .NET par, uh, project and linked to um, issue number 28. Issue number 28 is a JVM parser. And uh, Alex is suggesting we need a little bit of... Um, a little bit of help adding some docs for this, but it looks like, let's see, we've got 36 files here. Um, migration backup, I'm not sure what, oh, uh, git ignore. Hmm. Um, so JVM, yep, yeah, packaging palm. So adding a couple of reference here, testing, nice. Um, I think, do we have a GitHub action to run these unit tests? I'm, I'm not even going to look in and, and get too familiar. Um, but Tamil value Java, if it's mostly a migration to get it work, just a base implementation working in Java. Yeah. So there's referencing for the tests. So. Um, so I think, right, just making sure here, um, I don't think I have a GitHub action for this one. So we'll need a GitHub action to, to build, uh, build the, the JVM parser. Um, looks good. As a follow-up. Uh, I'm going to let, let me start the the issue now. Um, uh, need a GitHub action to build build and deploy and eh, to build a uh, JVM parser. Build and test. There we go. Um, this is an enhancement. 
Uh, sure, it's a good first issue. Help wanted on that. Um, I don't think we have milestones, no. Nor do I really have projects. Eh, let's put it here. So, and I'll reference this now in that pull request. As a follow-up, we uh, have number 86. Um, I've added uh, 86 to help ensure uh, your code tests properly and is ready uh, to be uh, published. So uh, let's merge that pull request. There we go. So we will need some documentation to go with this. And um, I'll add my comment. So 28 over here. Make sure this doesn't get closed um, because we need, right, let me refresh, make sure this doesn't get, yeah. Um, initial parser is merged. Um, need some docs and, um, and a GitHub action to help build the, uh, to help build and test the parser. I think that's fair. And that was what, 80, 84? No, 83? No, 86? Yeah, there it is. So I'm not gonna close it, but I'm gonna leave it out there. Um, with the note that we need some docs to go with it. So, not that big a deal. Shouldn't be too bad to put together something. If any of you out there are interested, want to write a little bit of documentation to contribute, you can do that. We'll review and merge it in here on stream. I think, yep, that's all we have for today in Tamil. Um, so that's merged in. And uh, I, I think we're in good shape with that. Um, scrolling down here, I see... Couple comments. Alex wants to research some of the doc FX stuff once it's merged. Hey, it's merged. Yeah, hopefully it's not too much work to get it to generate and have some some nice Java API documentation for the parser. We we still need that Python documentation. I, I wonder if that can be generated as well. Um, Alex, that's a very good point. Um, then perhaps we need to deploy to a Java package manager. I'd, I'd love to hear some recommendations on a good place to push this. And maybe this goes hand in hand with that GitHub action that we uh, we just added. Um, to build... Uh, to, 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 building and testing Java with Maven. Um, let me... I'll just edit the description. Uh, we should also have mm, an action uh, step that that publishes uh, to a Java package repository uh, like like Maven. Um, if the uh, if the action is executing on the main branch. So it's it's effectively doing a release. So merge and kick it out appropriately. So good stuff, you're right, you're right. Um, by using Maven, it should be easy to push it to Maven Central and other package managers. Love, love what you're saying there, Kuros 51. Um, that's, let's do it, sure. If I'm, I don't have expertise in that, it's not something that I want to get into today. I want to continue moving on Clip Talk. We can come back and talk about this later this week and, and see if there's any suggestions, any motion in that direction here. Would love to see that. Major Gamer Geek, you need to learn what Tamil is. So it, it's a markup language we're inventing live on stream. We're inventing it live on stream. And uh, we've been going through and and defining a new markup language. We've been building parsers, whether it's 
TypeScript, which means it'll also work with, um, um, dare I say, JavaScript. And um, it's also uh, going to allow us to learn about building things like colorization for our favorite text editors and, and code editors. It's going to help us um, learn about optimizing and making making something like a parser work faster. What do you mean hat not found? Of course it knows what this hat is. It knows what this hat is. Um, good morning. Oh my gosh. Do you see who it is there? Do you see who it is? It's, well, it's Graham's here. How you doing, Graham? But it also JAF1021 is here. Hello there, mom. Hey, mom. Can we get some meatloaf? We want it now. Can we get some the meatloaf? meatloaf? We'd like some meatloaf. What's she doing? I never know what she's doing. I know what she's doing. Hi, mom. How you doing? Mom's here. I'm going to mark number one as done and we're going to move into number two here. Did it mark? Why didn't it mark number two active? There it goes. How's it going there, Mom? Good to see you. Uh, meatloaf, please. Uh, yeah, now we all want meat. Can you help us out? Is, is there a good place that you recommend on the internet to get meatloaf? No, I'm kidding. Totally kidding. Um, so good to see you, Mom. So what's what I like about, about Tamil also here, look at that yum. <laughs> But the other thing I, I like about Tamil is that um, this is something that that the the muggles, the non technical folks, are going to be able to read, format, and because it's got such simple rules here for formatting, it, it, they can easily understand um, how to write in this markup language, right? I mean, when you look at this, right, seeing documentation that says, well, here's how easy it is to format. Uh, even mom can can read that and, and can see the relationship between these values, right? And can see that, well, value one is related to these three values, and these are kind of siblings to each other, and this is a parent to these three child values. And the, they can pick up and run with it. You love Tommel. Tommel's a nice a nice format. Tommel's more like an any file on steroids. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody has their own favorites, but we're we're learning and inventing something along the way here. And if if nobody uses it, that's okay too because we've learned all these various little ways that we can integrate in, into our favorite tools, whether it's syntax highlighting in Visual Studio Code or or Vim or Sublime or Visual Studio, whatever it might be that we're going to build little integrations with and formatting that, that uh, it, folks are going to be able to look at and read and be able to understand this syntax. Um, What's that? It, so, <laughs> I make no bones about it. it my mom's not technical. Um, it, it, sitting around the dinner table with my father and I for how many years? Um, she definitely learned a bit, but uh, my mom is not... Uh, it, she's not a software developer. She's she's certainly internet savvy, but she's not... Uh, she's not in the, in the industry, as it were. So... Yes, I, even mom, my mom, that's what I'm talking about. Mom, it, she was right there. So, stop digging, says Alex. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Graham. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Uh, mom, mom, you, come on. It's me. It's Jeff, okay? It's, it's, Jeff -ha -ha. you know, right? You're gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? I'm not Am I wrong. I'm, I'm being polite. Your eldest son turned 19. Oh no. Wow. My mom is on Twitch. That does make her hip. That's right. I, I there was a, a suggestion at one point. I don't remember if it was a suggestion from a friend. Um, but there, there was this idea of uh, do I bring mom on for Mother's Day? And we do a Mother's Day. Uh, stream I I don't know I don't know if she'd be up for that oh boy now 
the chat room. What have what have I done? Oh no. Um. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to apologize. Okay. Uh yeah. Um. And when it comes to apologizing to mom. Take it one step at a time. Identify the problem. Fix it. It's a three-step process. Yeah. Ah, okay. We'll get through this. <laughs> you'd love to meet. You'd love to meet mom. That it must happen. Okay. All right. A pair programming session with mom. Okay. <sighs> um. And Carrie, coding bandit, saying oldest oldest son turning nineteen. Um. I'm. It, my my daughter turned seven seventeen. Oh my gosh. And uh, it's it, I'm I'm blown away how fast she's growing up. So um, it's definitely something to to watch out for. Let me tell you. Um, this is Clip Talk. This is uh, this is the project we've been working on, and and we're we're nearing the finish line. Um, <laughs> Yes, and we're we're getting there. This this application we've built, it's, we've intended it to be very fast, very very high performance, so that you can interact with it. Um, uh, okay, so that um, it's it's going to be able to support social media interactions. So you can find this at cliptalk.com. And, and the front page is kind of static right now. It hasn't really changed too much. There's a reason why, and and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, but you can see down the side here, suggested streamers, the channels you follow that are being indexed by ClipTalk. Right now, we're looking at about 68 channels that are being indexed by ClipTalk. More than 3,700 um, clips that are on, on the system. 68 channels being indexed. Um, so good progress. It's small at this point. We're not, we're not crushing it with content yet, but it's going to happen. It's going to come. It's going to happen. We can see, click through to friends like our bald bearded builder friend here. And there's, there's fun clips here that you can scroll down and see. Um, and it's great stuff. It really is. I'm, I'm kind of antsy about how some of this that's just off screen takes a little bit longer to load. Um, we may end up having to tune that a little bit, but um, really cool. Great. Um, and, the, and the performance going back and forth here is that's pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good, right? This, th this homepage of content is really cached out. Um, and it's loading it out of Azure Store. It's JSON files that it's loading. Um, but we're starting to see some new folks pop up and appear on that homepage, like Code Rushed introducing Sprinkles. The Sprinkles, Sprinkles, the Battle. Do you know about Sprinkles, the Battle Unicorn? Let me refresh your memory. Holy cow! What are we doing today, kids? You got here just in time for something new. Something new. We are animating Sprinkles. The Battle Unicorn. This is Sprinkles coming in here soon. Next to practice. Now that's a Battle Sprinkles. Unicorn. Sprinkles the Battle Unicorn. Oh, I love it. Dungeon that's our friend Mark Sprinkles. Miller. He's Code Rushed here on Twitch. Check out his stream. He's another member of the Live Coders team. Um, a major gamer geek. Let me grab that. Let me grab that. Um, hey developer, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So, it, right, really fun content. You can come through, you can click to like, you can comment. These are base features at this point. You can even share and it'll share out in what any of the social medias. It, this actually looks a lot better on your phone, but it's all out there. You've got the whole family watching on the living room TV. Well, let me, we, we're going to reach over. Let me answer Major Gamer Geek's question. We're going to give Jason a little bit of cred here. Um, will the clips here on Clip Talk disappear if the broadcaster deletes their clips? Funny you should say that. 
Funny you should say that. Well, we're waiting. Our friend Jason helped with this, and what we've got out here is the first of some integrations to remove clips and invalidate cache when that happens. Which means that because we can't re listen for any kind of an event on Twitch that says, oh, this doesn't exist anymore, we're going to need to poll. We're going to need to check Twitch occasionally and remove content. So we started, Jason and I started talking through a little bit of um, service bus implementation for how we're going to do this interaction so that we have some sort of process out there that's looking at and polling on the various clips that we have and just making sure that they still live out there. If they don't, yank them, mark them as deleted, and remove them from ClipTalk for exactly that reason that, that was pointed out. If, if the clip is deleted from Twitch, we don't want to have it over here. That's a problem. So we need to keep that sync in play. So, um, Irindos asks, has fairy, uh, fairy, fairy wings, of course, has she seen that unicorn? I don't, I think she may have, um, but uh, check this out. I can click the, the share link and just copy and uh, we can paste that right there. In fact, we can even do this. Let me, let me go out to the big, to the big Twitter and we can share it and kind of show off another piece of functionality that we built here. Um, let me pause that. Um, so we'll say, uh, hey, uh, fairy wings. There she is. Um, uh, we thought you might be interested in the battle unicorn. In... Uh, Sprinkles the Battle Unicorn, and I can share the link there. Um, and it automatically generates the card for Twitter. And it does that because we set up so that that link, when you, when you click through to just the clip, has a corresponding bit of HTML that sits out there. And you're going to see, you're gonna, this is, this is going to be an amazing segue. Has a, has a piece of content. You see, um, when I mouse over, don't even mouse over, just open it up here, Fritz. You see it goes to this location, cliptalk.com slash clip slash uh, punchy difficult oyster praise it. Okay, whatever. Well, that URL also exists in Azure storage. So I'm here in web clip and it was punchy difficult oyster praise it. Uh, see, I'm I'm terrible with the f with this punchy. There it is. Uh, punchy difficult oyster. Praise it. There it is. So when you try to navigate a bot to that location, it actually gets this file instead of the presentation. Now, why is that important when we talk about service bus and removing content? Because this comes full circle now. As Jason submitted that pull request. When content is removed, not only do we have to delete it from our table that says, here's a list of all of our clips, but we need to invalidate cache, which also means we need to remove this file. This is where we thought Service Bus would be better than having a series of queues. A series of queues is like a series of tubes, and that's, that's how the internet works, right? It's a series of tubes. No, not quite like that. So we had a couple of cues that we were firing and we were interacting with in order to maintain the state. And you see, look at all these already. To maintain the state of some of these caches behind the scenes. But as we think more and more about this, we have an event that happens. And that event is, there's a new clip. There's an update to the clip. There, the clip's been removed. Well, we're gonna take a couple of actions on that that are appropriate to that initial event that happened. The clip's been removed. Mm, okay, go delete it from the table. Go 
remove it from all of the caches, which means remove this value, go into the cache for, in this case, it's Mark Miller. He's code rushed. Go into the code rushed cache of content for his channel. That's what ST is, streamer, code rushed. And reach into here. And when that opens up, uh, right? These are in JSON information about all the clips that are going to appear on the code rushed page. Well, go find that clip in here and wherever it might be, I don't know where it is in here, and delete it, save this back into storage, right? That's what I mean by refresh the cache. So there's the remove it from there, but there's also the rebuild that cache when new content arrives, new likes, new comments, and we need to rebuild what that looks like. Well, that's actually the same action, right? From a couple different directions. If I delete... I still need to rebuild this JSON file. If I update, because there's new likes, there's new comments, there's new view counts, I still need to update this file. When I get new, um, when I get new clips, I need to update this file. So these are all doing the same thing. They're just being triggered by different events. So there's this concept of we can do a service bus that will take that initial um, that initial request of remove these files, process that, hand off to all the cache invalidation, fan that out so that this cache gets removed. The other cache up here for for the clip in the clip folder gets removed. But there's also the streamers are right here as well. These are the cached pages for each one of these streamers. So if I bring one of these up, I'll bring up our friend Fierce Kittens here. This is HTML to generate the um, to generate the page for the streamer card, and it, it's almost the exact same format as what we have for the clip card. It's just a generated page for social media crawlers. And eventually we may rebuild this so it has other search engine applicable information in there so that this content shows up nicely on on Google, on, on Bing, on what have you. Um, did you know the internet is made of cats? Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um... You're not wrong. Happy, awesome sentiment. Yeah, look at the sentiment go. So, um, the event-driven architecture that we're, we're laying out here, we're introducing, is going to make this easier to be able to manage and deploy. And I've got two different syntaxes for the, uh, the formatting here. The, the files in Azure Storage are case-sensitive. So we've got to cross that. That's an issue that we need to make sure we can handle. Um, <clears throat> but once we have that, that case-sensitive, appropriate um, formatting, there's other folks that when they key in URLs, they just push everything to lowercase. So we want to support the all lowercase format also. So not only do we have code rushed with capital C, capital R, we have the all lowercase instance also. Uh, I, you know what? I could have written something into Azure Front Door that says, you know what? If if it's going into this folder, force the transition, force the um, URL to request all lowercase. Could have done that. Might not have been a bad idea. Then I can, instead of storing two copies of everything, I could have just stored one. It's not a bad idea now that I think about it. Um, I'm going to add that as an item to take care of here. But I want to talk about this service bus implement, initial service bus implementation Jason has for us and look at taking my couple of functions that I wrote, bust those out into something that can be consumed by the service bus and we'll wrap up with talking about the discover algorithm that we need to start calculating. Um, add a front door rule to force the... Um, the request from Azure Storage 
Uh, from, yeah, Azure Storage. To all lower, to lowercase. Um, go. And I'm gonna put that somewhere out in the future. It works for right now. We'll we'll plan and we'll do more for this next milestone that I'm calling future. I'm gonna mark this as an enhancement. Not really necessary, but it'll work. Tell me it knows that. Tell me it knows that hat. Why didn't it know that? Um, it should know this hat. It was picking up the hat earlier. Um, no matter. So there you go. There's the... Hey, it's our friend Imperial. Oh, look at the puppy. Anyways, moving on. Um, so this pull request has a couple of commits here. Eight files changed. Let's take a look and see what, what Jason brings to us. So there's clip update functions. Uh, this looks like a brand new file. It's all green here. GitHub gives you a little indicator here to tell you how much of the file has changed with little green and red blocks indicating appropriately. So. Yes, BSD guy. I do have a lot of hats. I'm well over 100. And uh, that's... Inconceivable! And our friend Fierce Kittens is is getting ready to make some for me. Yes, right? You know Fierce Kittens. There can be only one. And she's a live coder and and a variety streamer playing games like Stardew Valley and Phasmophobia and what have you. Uh, sewing embroidery. It's really cool watching the embroidery machine work. It's like watching a Zamboni on an ice rink. Or the US Open tennis, Wimbledon tennis, French Open tennis, Australian Open tennis, whatever you might be, right? Just, it's like, okay, that's pretty good. It'll entertain cats for hours watching the embroidery machine go around and, and stitch things. Um, but uh, she also writes code on string, and she's really, really good at it. Do I have a favorite hat? Ooh. It's got to be the C, the super C sharp hat. Uh, that it's kind of like my signature hat. Um, it should be over on it should be on the hats website. If it's not, that's not right. Um, right, it should be here. Fair, the fairy wings. Fairy wings just resubscribed for twenty seven months. Booping before I go clean. Have a good one there, Fairy Wings. Hey, thank you so much for the resub, and we'll make a donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. We were just talking about... Fairy, do you know about Sprinkles the Battle Unicorn? Do you know about Sprinkles the Battle Unicorn? We were just mentioning, and Irindos thought, hey, does Fairy know about Sprinkles? Anyways... The, yeah, Battle Unicorn. How are you doing today, kids? You got here just in time for something new. We are animating Sprinkles, the Battle Unicorn. This is Sprinkles coming in here soon. Next to Frack. There's Sprinkles. See? Sprinkles, the Battle Unicorn for the Dungeons & Dragons live streaming show on Twitch that we are going to go live with on Sunday. Well, it was some time ago on Sunday, but yes. Um, uh, Sprinkles is my favorite battle unicorn. There we go. And there's the comment. So, that's right, fairy. And uh, you're right. That hat does need a little bit of a wash. It does. So... Um, I try to avoid washing my hats, um, but uh, it's seen a lot of wear, so. Um, where was I? Yes, battle unicorns, because what else would you... Well, of course they're battle unicorns. I need a hat with sprinkles on it. That's not a bad idea. Holy cow, what are we doing today? I refreshed there, and it updated the comment count here. That's something we're going to want to figure out at some point in the future. But uh, that comment count is actually being updated behind the scenes by a queue. So when there's comments, it drops an entry into a into a queue, and 
it will update this count and rebuild the cache for that behind the scenes, um, right? It, it, I forget if that one comes out of cache or not. I don't think it, no, that one doesn't come out of cache. That's a straight count. Um, but if we go over to the Code Rush page, um, this one was rebuilt. This comes out of cache. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see here. Where'd it go? There you go. That's coming out of cache, and it's right there. So, cool stuff. Yeah, we um, a hat with sprinkles the battle unicorn. That that feels like a request for for fierce kittens, and that'll be it, that'll be a crazy hat, right? Fairy wings. It, it, I mean, oh gosh, it did that comment didn't pop up in featured chat, but uh, yeah, that would be a thing. Totally a thing. Moving on. Um, so, there she is now, Fierce Kittens. Um, so, what Jason has for us here is clip update functions um, takes in an Azure Blob storage clip service. Um, I'm guessing you refactored so that we have Azure, Azure Blob storage clip service. Right, because there's eight files here. Da, 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 da. What do we have? Uh, jump to Azure Blob Storage Clip Service. Get a path. Okay, so you, right, just wrapping the interactions with. Um, now that's getting particularly the web path. Right clip HTML, upload async, right streamer HTML, but. Um, there is a separate cache location, so we may want to change. Right, blob path is just the is the where to go? Yeah, is is the name of it? May want to change that because right now I've got I believe a couple of couple of these that we need. So we have web, we have cache. For these files, we have the followers. Search is where the search index should be writing, and it's not actually writing here. I don't get that. It just went off of what was there. Okay. So, opportunity for improvement. No problem. So, oops. Um, there. Okay. So, it's it, this is doing the reading and writing to the web folder. That's fine. We'll, we can extend this and have it, have it own the interactions with other... Um, other blobs, right? And blobs is, are just a way to define a file that's stored somewhere that we can serve or or grab and um, go through quickly here. Crawler functions pulled some code out of here. Um, crawler functions here. Uh, ho, ho, ho. Await clip service, write clip HTML. And it's taking in the string builder. So instead of going through and having all the content here for interacting with the blob, it's now centralized. Nice. That's better. Um, because now we don't have all the writing of files scattered across a bunch of different functions. Uh, generate HTML for streamer. Yep. Instead of interacting here, it's in one place. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, Twitch client secret. Table connection storage string. Okay. Okay to centralize the connection string that's fine clip updated event ah clip slug is deleted channel not bad i had an idea of of something else that we could put in here is the um the number of views is something that we need to update and recalculate every now and again and there's actually a a method out there that's called occasionally to go and update the number of views and and update some of the cache appropriately I could see us putting that in here as well we and something else you might not know this out there friends but you can actually change the title of a clip did you know this Graham 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 Weldon just gifted five subs oh my goodness Thank you so much, Graham, for five gift subs into the channel. We're going to make five donations to the Raspberry Pi Foundation, Duke of Heron, BB and VA, Mr. Egregious, Hyper Paradise, and Cup O Pizza. Cup O Pizza. That sounds more delicious than Cup O Noodles. Thank you so much 
for for those gift subs. Congratulations to the five of you on those gift subs, and uh, you're going to be able to use all the all the emotes and and throw emotes at my face here live on stream. Congratulations to you. Much appreciate. Um, but I was saying about clips. Did you know that uh, you can rename clips? So here I am on the clips page as a streamer, and um, I can I'm, I can click into one of these, and you can change the title here and save it. So when there's a clip updated, we may have title and views that we need to deploy as well. So something to, to keep in mind that we may want to add in here as extra fields. Um, right, in fact, uh, let's add uh, title and view count to the uh, update. So add that as a single comment. Thank you. Um, so the back office now, back office project now as a reference to the service bus. Azure Blob Storage Clip Service, we already looked at this. That's doing the writing of the files, that's fine. Startup now adds a, a dependency capability for us to reach into that, good. Sync Clip Function, so this is where Jason's been doing his work and trying to get things glued together here. Um, so... Uh, might suggest that that action as a different event. Perhaps. In which case, we would have a deleted event and we would have an update event. We would also have a new event as well. And listen for those different events, parse and deploy, and work appropriately. Um, um, Major Gamer Geek has a question here. Um, let me see here. Does Twitch not expose a clip UID, a clip ID, or a GUID? Um, it, it's a fine question, and it's it's interesting the way that Twitch does this. Um, let's bring up the the reference here, the reference documentation. If I go down to clips, and we're we're getting clips, here's what the response data looks like over here. Is there a way that I can zoom in on just this? Um, so the ID that they put on this. It is this text that you have that appears when you navigate to a clip on Twitch. So it's something like awkward, helpless, salamander, swift rage. And the URL is clips Twitch TV, awkward, helpless, salamander, swift rage. Um, I, the embed URL is embed question mark clip equals blah, blah, blah. There is a video ID that goes with it, but that video ID isn't used anywhere. Right, even when, right, the ID of the clip being queried, that's a string. That's this, not the video ID. So, it's not so much a GUID, right? And it's weird that their GUID is this funny string name, but it works. And that's what they're calling the ID. So, that's what we're kind of running with it. And, and I've taken to calling it a slug because when... When you have, for search engine purposes, a, a block of text that you put on a URL like that, that looks like that, folks will refer to that as a, a slug because it's a, a block of text that really doesn't have any value to the content of what's being presented other than it's the URL, it's the ID that goes in there. Yeah, I agree, Graham. Slug, slug kind of makes sense with that. We're okay with that. Um, Graham also points out, would a cup of pizza be a cooking situation or just a serving suggestion? Hmm. Idea. I think it might be a serving suggestion. But this leads to the question, our, our friend um, and fellow live coder InstaFluff makes mug cakes on Friday. Maybe there's a mug pizza at some point in the future. So we have a cup of pizza. That, that, that could be tasty. Could be messy. But that could be tasty. Hmm. Mug pizza. Stay tuned. We'll figure that one out. So, um, continuing on here, I'm going to grab your question there, Naked Flame, and pin that for a second. So, process batch. When we're processing a batch of clips, we have a list of 
Uh, clips that come in on an activity trigger. Activity trigger? What's activity trigger? I'm not sure what activity trigger is. Um, oh, yes I do. That's for... I'm sorry. This is for the uh, durable function. And there's also a service bus, bus wire up here for the clip update topic. Connecting with the service bus connection so it can reach out and... Um, after it tries to delete the clip, it will collector add sync. So collector is, yeah, the that service bus topic. It will add that this event happened. This slug, this channel was marked as deleted. So that way then anything that is also listening to that service bus can pick up on that event and go refresh and, and make those appropriate changes to their, their caches and whatnot. So take care, Graham. Thanks so much for tuning in. Ace has 24. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. So naked flame asks a question here. Um, I've created a website using Angular, which is consuming a .NET Core web API. I'm Scott, I'm new here. <laughs> Call me Vias. Thank you so much for the sub. Welcome in with your Twitch Prime, and we're going to make a donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. That'll be matched by the Microsoft money, and uh, we're going to help those folks in their efforts to make technology accessible to everyone. Let me finish reading Naked Flame's question here. Um, I need to implement an email service to allow for sending emails for a production use case. How would you recommend approaching this? I've seen about mail kit and, use, mail kit and using it to send an email from a Gmail account, but doesn't seem fit for production. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, SendGrid for this. SendGrid has fantastic APIs for you to generate notifications, generate and, and send to a mailing list easily. So uh, I would recommend you looking at wiring up to SendGrid. Um, SendGrid has APIs that work great for uh, AWS, oh, Azure, what have you. Robert Tables months. is here. El Doen, thank you so much for five months with us. And we'll make another donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. That's right. And SendGrid is part of Twilio now as well. So check that out. They do have a very nice NuGet package. Easy to set up and get started with. Roberta Bulls is here. Hello, hello, my friend. So this looks good. Um, I, I think we need to now migrate those other actions in here that are going to listen for that. Um, that are going to listen for that activity on on the service bus. That are going to listen on that subscription. Uh, while we're going to need to create subscriptions appropriate for invalidating the cache for these clips that have been deleted. So, um, you're welcome, Naked Flame. Best of luck to you in your project. So, I'm going to mark this, uh, go up to the top. So, um, looks good. I will create uh, subscriptions on the topic for invalidating cache. Invalidating cache. Removing from cache. So, uh, right, when a clip's been removed, we need to remove it from... And this shouldn't happen too frequently. Uh, discovery cache... Well... We're not going to update the discovery cache. Discovery cache is what I call the front page. If something's been removed from there, the discovery cache right now is being rebuilt every 20 minutes. I expect that to go down to every five minutes, eventually every two minutes, as as volume goes up on the website. So I'm going to not worry about that one. But uh, streamer page cache. So that's going to be um, in cache slash st underscore... Um, channel name, uh, display name, Cha uh, channel display name, dot JSON. Um, right, remove from 
Um, um, the the bot HTML cache. I need to give these things a name, which is uh, dollar web slash clip slash uh, slug, right? The clip slug. So we'll add those in. Uh, there's a method at the top that fits that for remove. It uses a service bus trigger. Da, 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 da. Uh, I clicked the thing. There we go. Yeah, remove clip from cache and it uses service bus trigger and goes and does those things. Fantastic. Yeah, on the remove clips. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Okay, so it is there, so we don't, I don't need to do those. Uh, so I'm going to update this and just remove those. Uh, let's merge. Get this out there. Um, uh, Service bus subscription. And logic to delete, delete clips from HTML cache on removal. There we go. Kind of merge together a couple of those comments so it looks nice. There we go. Um, I'm not sure if you want to continue working in that branch, but we can delete that. Um, because of our architecture now, it's going to go deploy these, and in about three minutes, it'll be running out there live in production. So that's cool. The forget feature is actually going to plug into a little bit of what Jason just built there. So I want to actually refactor this. Come back to that later. But let me show you what I wrote for indexing these. Indexing new clips and... I've already got a topic built out there and I think I want to build two or three subscriptions so that when there are new clips, we just add the new clips into the topic, just deploy it, and it will go and build out the caches appropriately and refresh all of those things. Um, oh, we're going to need to add that construct connection string to the configuration. You're right. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to blow it up. So if I go over here to the Azure, this is the big Microsoft Azure. You know the Azure. It's the Azure. Um, you're familiar with the Azure. It's We, we all like the Microsoft Azure. Um, so there is a connection string in here for how to get into that's into the service bus. And it is service bus connection right there. We're going to need to add that to it's only in the back office uh right this is in yeah the back office project so i'm going to copy that over here and i'm going to grab a shared access policy i don't want that one per se let me get the one just for the topic there it is. Clip update is where Jason is working. And there's an access policy here. There's the connection string. I'm going to grab that connection string. And I'm going to walk back up to this. Nah, I, I need to go to my back office um, function, which I don't see here. I don't see it. Uh, this one. And hey there, D written. Good to see you. Um, it's not the app keys. It's the configuration is where we need to go. Because we're going to add a new con a configuration key. Uh, the value is... Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Way to go, Fritz. Um, I'm going to go back into the service bus. Into the topic. For that policy. Put on a different hat? A blazer hat? Oh yeah, we'll get the blazer hat for sure. Oh, this is real good. There's no rotate key button. Oh no, no, there it is. Alright, regenerate the primary key. Yes. Give me one second here, friends, while I redeploy. Back over here, back into this configuration. I need day I need a timer up here. Day since Fritz last doxed doxed himself. You know. Way to go. Save, continue. And now that's updated. All right. I need to clip that sound bite from Steve. Yes, I do. That's a very good idea. Um, I I really like that idea. Um, to to borrow a little bit of uh, Mr. Wozniak's voice. Mr. Wozniak, the Woz. Yes. <sighs> I do do that a little bit often. Screech trap. Yeah. Was was would be very upset. My where is my blazer hat? We need to change to the blazer hat. Um I've only got about half hour here. So let me do this. Let me okay that. Um move this over here. I can dock it back there now. Um so that's done, merged. Um, so I'm going to go over to my code and we're going to update this code so that it, and I, what I should do is pull in uh, git merge origin, is it origin slash main? There we go. Now I can use a little bit of that technique um, to integrate with here. Um, let me pull this over here for a second. Take my local settings for back office and add a service bus connection in here. Uh, that's not going to be the top level service bus connection back here for the purposes of working locally I'd like to be on the top the the top of the service bus and the actual deployed version well it's I didn't put it on the top I put it on on the topic I'm gonna need to change that yeah. Yeah. Let me go back to the back office. No, you know what I should do? Um, Back in a service bus. Let's create another one that can just read and write and doesn't have access. Um, see, I have root manage shared access. Let me add another one here. Um, that can send and listen... And this is, um, let's call this uh, production back office. So this has access to do those things. There we go. Copy that to the clipboard and go back to the back office function app. Pop this out so I don't do that same thing again. Right. 
Bring it over here. Watch me dox myself again. Service bus connection. This one. Say okay. Save, continue. Namespace connection string should not contain entity path. What? What's this over here? No. And you're showing my subscription ID there again. Thanks. Thanks so much. Overview. Yeah, there it looks like it's working. All right. Um, moving on. I need to change. It, it, day since I last doxed myself would not be a boolean. Bah. Um, subscription ID. Eh. Yeah, I cleared it out and it's now got it's now got a, a cleaner um, ID on there. So let me bring this back and we need to change to the blazer hat. Uh, give me one second here while I while I go get the blazer hat. It's over on the other side of the room. Um, I'll be right back. There we go, blazer hat engaged. All right, we got it. Check that off, done. Uh, moving back over here. Ta -da 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 -da. All right, so I want to refactor and get, well, and then we're gonna refactor and get the, the new, right, the new, um, new clips. So, go ahead, go ahead, it's the blazer hat. make me sad there we go um give it a minute it, we'll try that again it should have that um not this one not that one uh no no um here we go refresh channel so once an hour and i i've been loading these manually but let me get rid of that it's going to go find roughly 10% of the content on Twitter that we know about. Um, get all the channels that um, that start with whatever that digit is. No, end with whatever that digit is. Um, <laughs> um, channels to search, where they have the opt-in for clips to download, and load clips for that channel. And we have these four loops here. For each of those channels, um, get the clips for that streamer um, up to a certain, right, for this channel ID. And when you take a look at this, this is going out, making a request to try to get 100 that have occurred um, since the last clip was added and up until yesterday. So... It won't get today's clips. I wonder if we if we got rid of that ad days if it would still work. I can try it. We can try it. Um let's try it. Right? 
Let's run this. So it'll run right now. Go. Let's see if we can go load up some new clips. So the idea is after it loads the clips, I'm going to save these into table storage. We want to kick off the the various cache updates. Hey, uh, is that Glenn Lead All? Good to see you. Hello, hello. Here, this is going to run. There's all the things and loading clips. Here's the channels that it's identified. Oh, that's a big problem. The messaging entity could not be found. That's a problem. That's the service bus. Uh, that's a problem. So the response should be 200. Okay, so it, it does allow you to load for up until now. So, um, sure, go ahead, load that data. Uh, load that data. I don't like the looks of that. Message processing error. Um... Uh, I, wow. Mm, that's a problem. So, um, I don't think, am I getting through this at all? I'm up against this series of service bus errors and I'm just getting crushed by it. That's a big problem. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going, it's telling me, I'm, I'm wondering if I don't have the right connection key here, local, for the service bus, right? Um, this one, let me actually just bring this over here. Um, uh, my local settings. My local settings look all right, from what I can tell. I accidentally opened. No, we don't need you, Visual Studio Code, goodbye. Uh, there we go. So let me go grab. That, this. Okay. Try that again. Working on clip talk. See that? Dun, 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 dun. See if that giving it a, a different key if that worked. Come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm not getting drowned by those service bus errors, so I think I'm in good shape. Nope. The messaging entity, clip talk, clip update, remove clips, could not be found. Clip update. Yeah, the subscription's gone. Jason, the subscription we created is gone. Uh, 
Um, remove dash clips. Where are, you, where are you going? I didn't want you to go there. I'm going to re-add the subscription. Max delivery count. Um, yes, Azure does have a dark theme. So. Um, uh, five, two, two. Hey, fierce kittens, it's snowing in Texas. Are you kidding? Uh, now nah, make the message lock 30 seconds. That's fine. Um, yeah, go. So there's the subscription. Right, that, come on, pick up. You should find it and be working just fine. No. Holy crow. I'm hitting a bunch of poison cues here. Look at this. Hang on. Cannot access a closed stream. Oh, oh, I know what this is. Generate HTML for clip. Yeah, okay. There's a bug there. I know what, what, I know what happened here. Generate HTML for clip. Generate HTML for streamer. Um, it's down in here. Yeah. Get blob client. Upload async mem stream. Get content stream. You're writing into it. You flush at it's closing the stream in here is what's happening. Hey, Jason, good to see you. It's it's closing it. So we, we're on the other side of it's finding the service bus, um, which uh, for some reason got deleted. I, I'd love to know how it got deleted. There it is. Right. That remove clip subscription got deleted somehow. Um, <laughs> hello. Thank you. It's gonna be 40 in Ohio today and it's and it's snowing in in Texas. What's with that? There we go. So it's loading clips for these folks. Da, 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 da. Right, so there's their names. Soda pop and wild, code it live, code bullet, crass kitty, code rushed. Did we hit our break point? No. See, this is where I think it needs to be broken up a little bit. Well, now that looks like it's running properly. Right, so mem stream, memory stream, can read, can seek, can time out, it's all false. Object's been disposed because of the flush. You don't need to flush to the memory stream. When you flush, because it's a memory stream, it closes it, gets rid of it. So I might need to push that as an update uh, sooner than later.
Oh, let's see what we get. I'm not going to be able to get into the last two items here. Um, come on. So, Soda Poppin and Asmund Gold. Soda Poppin is a, a very large streamer. Asmund Gold, not familiar with them, but it looks like they've been getting some good content out there. I also think um, the dispose on the stream writer might be disposing of the memory stream. So there's my memory stream. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's back this up. Right, so step in. So writer, write async into that, right? So it's it's there, right? At this point, there's memory stream. It's got contents. And now that the writer has been disposed, yeah. Um, this is being called in two places. It's a memory stream. It's going to dispose of it. It's going to get rid of it. it yeah, dis it's disposing at the end of the using. So this gets this stream writer gets disposed. Um, which destroys the memory stream at that point. Um, so. And uh, memory stream. Um, so let's refactor this. Uh, Whitlock! Whitlock raided my stream with 45 viewers. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Whitlock, for the raid. Welcome in, Raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. Woo! 45 Raiders coming in. How's it going there? My name is Jeff Fritz. And we're writing a little bit of uh, Azure function code here that's generating some HTML to run behind the scenes for a new Twitch clip stream, uh, web service that I'm writing called ClipTalk that's going to bring social, social media-like in uh, interactions and networking into Twitch clips. Hey, Gaudutus. Why doesn't it know this app? So, yeah, disposing the, the wrapper gets rid of the stream. So, uh, we're just going to clean this up here. And we'll say constant, content stream position equals that. And... Uh, We don't really need to return. So, uh -huh. equals uh, new memory stream. So, what are we doing over there on your channel, Whitlock? Let us know. Can I get a shout out for Whitlock? CTOR has an overload to keep the parent stream open. Let's take a look, see. This one. Um, stream writer class. Da, da, da. Um, append data to the file. False overwrite. If the specified file does not exist, the parameter has no effect. Um, bool leave open right there. But you you literally have to. Auto flush base, in, base stream encoding. There's no way 
to say leave open without that. Yeah, you gotta go all the way down. Um. Where was I? Um, t -t -t this one. Yeah. All right. Let's let's back things up. So if I roll back to the way that it was here, right? We do it like that. Sure, let's leave the flush in there. See if that works. And see if I, I get it flowing through. Well, what's the error? Um, get content stream. Oh, I still have the uh, second parameter here. Do it again. Can I come fetch my weather? <laughs> they're getting some they're getting some Pennsylvania weather down there in Tejas good to see you Svava you know you know the Svava Blount the Svava how you doing um yeah here it comes oh now we we ticked over to 12 so now it's pulling the twos Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Gaudutis. And we'll make another donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation and their efforts to help make technology easy for anybody everywhere to learn. There we go. Now it's left open. Now we're in good shape. That should be able to work through now. And process. So we'll see it generate all those clips. Da, 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 da. Look at them all go, generating content for the clip talk. It's a beautiful thing. But I do need to push that change out, otherwise nothing's gonna be working. The deletes aren't gonna be generating properly. Well, the add new clips won't be generating properly. So I need to, once this is done, I'll grab the main branch, put in that don't close argument, republish, and we'll go. Yeah, I do need to update the panels for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. You're right, C Sharp DevOps. I do need to update it and, and put a link out there. You're right. Good point. So here, this is going to run for a little bit, and this is this is why I'm thinking roll this out into um, into the service bus. So these are functioning on different threads outside of each other. It's running off of a queue now, but uh, let this get handled somewhere else. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time here. We should see it generate now for the streamers. It's going to rebuild the cache. The streamers that we saw it working with. Um, Right, who it's going to load data for? Fairy Wings, Pistilli, uh, Frank Kruger, Dr. Lupo, Shroud. I know this person. It's loading seven new clips for Fierce Kittens. There we go. Refreshing the channels. Yeah, and I just ticked over. So it's going to try and go load clips again. Now, oh, because it's on the timer. That's fine. That's fine. Cancel. We're, we're done for there for now. Goodbye. Yes, I know. Did not shut down. Do it. Thank you. I'll regenerate and build some more and run it again in just a few minutes. But I need to, I need to, uh, uh, preparing for service bus. Okay. Uh, let me go back over to the main branch, pull in what's out there, and let's push that quick update in. Where was it? Right streamer HTML. What do you mean you can't navigate to it? Do I need to teach you? 
do I need to teach you? It's there. I just pulled in those updates. It's Azure Blob Storage Clip Service. You know it's there. You know it's there. It's right there. See? Told you it's there. But did you believe me? No! Um, Alright. Leave open. True. Um, uh, fixed. Um, closing stream writer when uh, generating HTML. All right, now that'll update and it'll, in, in about three minutes, be okay for caching data again. Uh, let me jump back over. No, that one. All right. So I'm down in here, refresh channel functions. Um, So let's take, so it, this, this method is way too freaking big. Line 44 to 117. It's almost, it's 70 lines long. That's way too complex for one method. So I, I want to bust this out. I want to make this a couple of separate things. So, so that it, right, it can behave and scale appropriately. That's where the service bus is going to come in, right? Um, what I should do here is I should bind a service bus topic right now. Service bus is like a, right? It, it's almost like a, a river with, with tributaries and branches. So a service bus topic is where we're going to lob a message that says there's new clips for a streamer. We'll have subscriptions that hang off of that new clips for a streamer those subscriptions all hear that same message. There's new clips for, we saw Fierce Kittens. There's new clips for Fierce Kittens. Okay, well, I need to do several different things. And and you see that that happened down here in this parallel for each that I wrote. Um, not just save it to the database, but then generate that HTML that you saw us just fix. Um, we need to update the user record to show, hey, the last clip that we got for, for Fierce Kittens is from yesterday, from January 9th. I need to generate regenerate the top clips for Fierce Kittens so that those new clips that we just created are in the queue, uh, are on the cache. I need to notify all of the folks that follow her that are on Clip Talk that, hey, there's now a new clip that arrived that you need to put and, and sort Fierce Kittens. We're only sorting by last clip date. So move her to the top of the list so folks know, hey, there's new content. And go update the cache for the Fierce Kittens page, not just um, not just the top clip. Well, what are the difference between these two? the cache for this streamer and this one. These might both be the same thing. Um, so the cache client, let's take a look at that one real quick. This is going into streamer cache. Where's that one? And that's being used here. Right, where's that being? Where's that being used? Yeah. Um, there should be a Q trigger that uses that. Yeah, in the current project. Q streamer, Q streamer, Q streamer. I don't see it being actually used by anything. Or is it in the crawler? Yeah, I need to centralize this, don't I? 
Oh, you know what? It's gener regenerating the HTML for the streamer. I don't need to regenerate this. This is pretty much static. Because it doesn't have any new information. Um, so you know what? I don't need to do that. That one I don't need to do. Um, the only re reason that I might need to do that is if I get a new bit of profile information about you. Let me, re I'm going to remove that for now. Hey, take care, Coding Bandit. You think one is family friendly? What's family friendly? Oh, one of the clips? <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, D Trouble asks, I, I prefer to use var in, in my code, and I don't specify the type. Um, shouldn't I prevent using var? Well, var is, this is strictly a human, right? This is a thing for human eyes. The, the compiler will look at this type on the right and set that type definition for this appropriately. It's, um, it, it's the same as if, Right, if I if I had a list of type string called called my strings, right, I, I can do this, and it's the same thing, right? In C sharp nine, you can use the default new constructor here to, um, and C sharp nine isn't active in this project because it's an Azure Functions project, which is in .NET three point .NET Core three point one, which doesn't have C sharp nine yet, but. Um, you can use that syntax and it's going to generate the appropriate new constructor on the right side at compile time in the IL so that it, it it runs the same way. This is strictly eye candy for us humans. Doesn't matter um, if you're using var, you're using new. It's, it's strictly a preference just to make it easy for humans to read code. So... It's tasty eye candy. You're not wrong. It's true. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take this, this, and this and separate those out into a new message that fires um, off of this topic. Now... See if it's got it. Come on. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Now it's got it. Um, so I think, just as we saw Jason do, um, I think we need to create a message, an event message, clip updated event. So I think we'll have uh, new clips for channel event that contains um, information about all the clips. And, and the top level data that we're going to add here to start. So I'm gonna add a new class over here. Um, I'm, I'm, thank you. Um, clip updated event, let's call this um, uh, new, new clips event. New clips for channel event. Yeah, right, v very descriptive. Um, doesn't this need to be marked serializable? I thought it did. Um, just because I'm paranoid like that, I'm going to drop a serializable on there. So the properties that I need to put on this so that we know what's coming through, right? And, and we'll be able to behave appropriately. Um, we're going to have the clip ID and we're going to have a bunch of clips for this channel. So we're going to have a, an, an array of clips, I think, right? Uh, so if we do this, and we call this new clips, because we're, we're loading a bunch of clips at once. No reason to generate 16 messages, because there's 16 different clips. D-Trouble asking me to go to Darth Vader mode for, it's right, it's five minutes? Is that right? Sure, we'll go over to that. 
Let's stop to music. Go over here. Voice change. Change up the sound effect. Bring on the auxiliary microphone. Five minutes on the clock. <laughs> here we go. New clips. What else do we have? What other information do we need to load? Last clip date. Yes. Daytime? Daytime offset. We're preferring daytime offset, so we'll go that way. Uh, last clip date. I should have done a... Uh, what's it called for that? No matter. Moving on. Broadcaster ID, broadcaster name. Yes, let's put that into mix. Uh, stream, channel ID, stream, uh, Twitch display name. And I think, I think, that's all we need for all of these. Luke. Luke, I am the father of your code. It's true. It must be. It's right there. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, I've got, this is the event that happened. New clips for channel. Load up. It'll be, here will be the array of clip IDs, the last clip date, channel ID, display name, and we'll have several different methods that effectively do these things on each one of them. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. let me see. And at some point, we'll want to update user information on a periodic basis so that, um, any changes to your profile picture flow through to ClickTalk as well. So, yeah, display names can change. Look at this. Updated their Twitch name to match the GitHub name. See, so this needs to ripple through our data store when that changes. Hmm. There's something we're gonna need to manage. Hmm. Yes. That could be a problem. Uh, let's create a ticket so we remember. Uh, no issue. <gasps> Who did it? You gonna read it? You gonna read it? Read it, stream elements. Thank you so much for that gift sub to Jason Bach. Congratulations. And we're going to make another gift, another donation to the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Yeah. Nope, not a problem, CG Lido. This is exposing a known feature of Twitch that we need to be sure we accommodate. Uh, need to sync changes to uh, Twitch channel display names. So, uh, ba -ba. it's not a bug, but I'm going to mark it as a bug because it's a logical issue. Put it in the future. Uh, when folks change display, need to sync changes to Twitch channels, change display names, and profile pictures. Uh, we should update ClickTalk data appropriately. There we go. Moving them back over here. So, what I'd like to do, run this, throw it into a task and do a wait on the completion of all of those tasks. And then, 
love the message on the uh, on the service bus. So let's move you out here. Uh, let's create a list of tasks. Let's call this DB tasks. Oh no. Uh, New list task. There we go. Thank you so much for the voice mod. But oh, we're going back. Uh, where is it? Did I? Did I already acknowledge it? I guess I did. Hmm. And we're back. Let me put the other music back on. And I'm gonna finish this little bit here and we'll we'll move on. Well, I'll I'll end the stream is what I'm gonna end up doing because I've got I've got a full day today. I gotta to get ready for tomorrow's stream as well. Um, we're gonna be talking about GRPC and open API on the um, C sharp with C sharp Fritz channel tomorrow. It, it, no, no Santa Wharf. And we're gonna wrap up here. I'm I i would not accept the redemption right now. Because I, I need to wrap up. Um, so let's say uh, db tasks dot add, and I can get rid of that. So now I can say db tasks. Uh, oh, I can't do an await. Well, ta uh, task dot wait all on that. I, I, wait. Wait, task wait all, and it takes a collection of tasks. Do I have to two array on this? Oh, maybe I do. Um, is that going to work properly there? think so you think this might be an ideal spot for durable orchestration yeah I can't await see that doesn't that's not awaitable there I think I'm okay so um, when that's done now we're gonna put the message on See, and it's it's the parallel for each year that I'm worried about with this. Is it going to play well? I don't know. Um, but I'm going to now, I want to do the same thing that he's doing over here on Sync Clip Functions, where it's not a durable client, it's not orchestration trigger. Right, here it is. So I'm going to put, mm, I'm not collecting, but I want to put it on the bus. Why don't you see that? Yeah. Um, isn't it, do I need to, let's go over here. Um, uh, site docs Microsoft com service bus binding because I'm adding it output bindings here we go uh, return service bus with I don't want to return just one I want to I'm going to be lobbing a handful of messages onto the bus. So I don't think I can bind to it in the collector because I'm... Right, that's receiving it. There's a usage section. Yeah, it's for... Um, the cure topic must already exist. Um, let's just make sure it didn't destroy the... 
the subscription. That should still be there. Remove clips. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, I think this is an output. I, I want to bind the topic so that I can not return. And I'm not triggering. I want to bind to it so I can lob stuff onto it. For creating multiple messages. A message is created when you call the add method. Okay. So the attribute I want is service bus, service bus connection, and put it on an I collector. Or am I returning that? No, it's a parameter type for output. So, okay. Go back over here. Uh, service bus, keyword topic name. So I'm going to be writing to a different topic because I'm going to write, I'm, I'm attempting to do this. Hey, there's new clips. Go notify of stuff. So it's not clip update. It's I'm adding, I'm adding new clips. Um, why did it? No matter. Uh, front door, service bus. Uh, topics. I'm going to new clips. Because I'm going to create several subscriptions in here to publish to. So I'm going to new clips. Yeah. Right. Uh, new clips. Um, entity type? Sure. Let's get rid of that and see if we can... There we go. Generate a using statement. Uh, I want a topic. Um, connection equals, and I'm going to use the same name that you used over here. That one. Good. And uh, that's wiring up to, what was it, an I... I async collector yes. and this is going to be of type uh, new clips for channel new clips for Chanel no uh, new clips for channel event Rats. there we go uh, collector Okay, so now what I should do, after that's done, collector, add async, new, one of these, and let's put some information on here. Channel ID equals, that, Twitch display name, C data, zero, Broadcaster name. Got that. Last clip date is going to be last clip date. Um, new clips. This is going to be um, C data, but I'm going to check this out. I'm going to use all the. Uh, uh, let's see. And I want the ID. Uh, to array. That's it. That's all the things I need. Cool. So this is going to add each time that there's one. I should. I have it as add async, which means it's gonna. Um. I, I need to do this synchronously because I'm in that parallel for each. So now these one, two, three, four methods here, I'm going to take these, bust them out, 
into separate subscriptions on the cert on that topic and and then each one of those subscriptions will do these couple of things now it's busted out appropriately you're right there is a synchronous collector that i probably should use instead do, 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 do. instead of calling i async collector can i just grab i collector cool so now i don't need add async it's just add so now i don't have this on the end good um Notify, get rid of that extra. Notify the service bus topic that we have new clips. So, and I'll have just these, these few simple methods set up for it to listen on those subscriptions and go act appropriately. The one actually is probably, right, for the, uh, for the crawler client. This is probably... Going to, going to just drop a message into that queue, at, right? For now, until I'm done moving that crawler client so that it's listening on the topic instead. Um, or, yeah, just have it put another message in that queue, right? Which is kind of fanning out a little bit crazy, but it'll work. Um, folder. That's a fine question. I don't mind ans answering that. Let's let's bring that that question up. Why aren't I? Why am I not using async functions? I, so I don't need to litter the code with get await or get result. So here's the deal. Um, I am. It's right there. What we found from from trial and lots of error. I'm wrapping this in a parallel for each. That parallel for each doesn't play well with the async. When you do an await inside there, it jumps right through. It sees that the thread's been released and doesn't behave appropriately. It doesn't behave as expected. So to avoid that, um, I'm just changing this up. It's a great question. And, and we literally just went through that on the last stream. So I don't mind covering that again because it, it's weird because it's not doing what you would expect. And I agree with what you're saying. I would prefer my functions to be async. That feels like the right way to go. And it it's not behaving appropriately for us. So um, thank you so much for the question. Very much appreciate. So let me wrap that and I can take these and I will make these get rid of that. So now these are going to be my next methods that are going to listen on subscriptions appropriately. So uh, public async task. I think I just make it a public async task. Um, and this one's going to be um, uh, update what update um, update user map for new clips sure sounds good um, I want this to be a service bus trigger thank you um, the queue name well it's not a queue it's going to be a topic the topic we're listening on and I don't like having that as like this, introduce a constant, and let's call this bus, bus topic, new clips. So we have that same thing everywhere. The, um, the subscription for this is going to be um, update user. I think that needs to be all lowercase. So let me create the update user subscription. So here's the update, the, the new clips topic. Why does it have successful requests? Nobody asked you yet. Um, add a subscription, update user, max delivery count, five. Two days, I don't need it to go that long. That's way too long. 
Uh, message lock duration, sure, looks good. And there we go. So now I have update user. So this one is listening on update user. The connection, connection equals, what was it? Service bus connection. There's another one that should be a constant right there. You know, uh, let's call this connection service bus. I, I, and these types of constants, I think we should roll out in our common library. So it's just everywhere. Um, so let's make this an I async, right? I async collector of type. Uh, what was it again? Uh, new clips for channel event. I'm going to want a I logger so we can log information. Thank you. Function name, I'm going to cheat and just bring this name up here. Really? Thank you. Um, and what it's going to do is just that. Now, um, do I have that right? Right, I want a service bus trigger. I'm receiving a... No, it's not going to be a string. Am I receiving a string? Well, it's a string in that case. Can I receive... Can I receive my type that I want? Most likely used cause due to thread exhaustion. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. String type. A custom type. If the message contains JSON, it tries to deserialize. Fantastic. So, or I can take a message receiver. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to change it to my type instead of, right? So, not that. Let's call this, right? New. Uh, I can't call it event. New clips. Okay, so get by channel ID. Da, da, da. New clips for channel event, channel ID. And I can do that async. Don't mind if I do. I didn't put that right, it shouldn't be async, it should be a wait there, see that? I'm, I'm going a little nutty. This should be new clips for channel event, last clip date, and it's updating appropriately. I can do this and that. New list of type task. Tasks add, do that. There we go. Tasks add that. Come on. Await task dot wait all tasks. Why don't you like this? Uh, fine. Done. One down. Um, oh, I forgot to grab this one. <laughs> so we need to do this. This is an easy one. Um, when all is the async, async function. Is that what I want? Ah, there we go. Thank you. All right. Uh, public async. Um, so I'm putting these onto a, a queue because that's where it lives right now. I'm, I'm literally going to be receiving these and just lobbing them all just to a for each to put them over on the queue. Yeah, I guess that's okay. Like this. Um, instead of having a return type. Right? Because if I'm doing... Right? Triggers and bindings. Queue storage. Output. Can I output cloud queue message? If you try to bind and get an error message, make sure multiple queue messages by using one of the following types. 
bingo. That's what I'll do. Um, so, public async task. Um, uh, generate HTML for new clips. Right. Uh, function name is going to be name of this thing. Thank you. Um, so what are we receiving? We're going to receive that service bus message and a logger, even though I'm not actually logging. Eventually we'll log and it'll be fantastic. Um, is it a queue trigger usage? Can you show me what this looks like? Outputting. Yeah, there we go. Q. Uh, the Q name is going to be Q crawler. There we go. And like I said, this will eventually move. Connection string is going to be... Um, we call it table storage. Once again, I should move that. Um, and this I'll do I async collector and we're receiving just a string on this. Um, and let's, can I just call this Q like that? Cause that'd be really handy. Right? Use triggers and binding with Azure's functions. Yeah. So, right, this is a trigger that says when this thing happens, and I need to give it the new one here, um, connect out to this other place, bind to the queue, so we just lob messages out there, and right, I'm, I'm, I'm creating this network of connections between objects here. But I don't want this to be update user. I want this to be like, um, like let's call this uh, build HTML. Part of me wants to put a hyphen in between so that it looks like two words. Back over here. No, I didn't use it for update user, so I'll just make it one more. New subscription. Doing the same thing. Max delivery count is five. Two days. Uh, da, 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 da. Two days. Message lock, 30 seconds. Go for it. So now I have build HTML, done. And all that I'm going to do here is this ugly for each. Um, for each, let's call it slug in, and I'm receiving, right? Is it the new, new clips for channel event? Um, for each clip. Why you do this? Right. Um, new clips. Q, send message, not send message. What am I doing? Add async. Slug. Done. Now I'm forking and going and deploying all of that. Next one, update the top clips. This is the top clips for the streamer. And it's call, just calling fetch top functions, fetch clip functions and doing that. So let's call this a new subscription and let's call this um, let's call this a streamer page. Next delivery count, I'll call it five. I'm only gonna go for two days because I don't need that much time because quite frankly, if it is that long, we got a problem. Um, so let me just drop that in here. I'm gonna just copy the same thing. And let's call this generate streamer page. Put that up there. And then we should be done this very quickly, is what and then. 
Um, I'm not firing into a queue. I'm not doing this. Instead, update the uh, clip cache for this page. And I'm calling cache top clips. I'm going to pass in the clip repository. I need the broadcaster ID. Guess what? It's in here. Channel ID. Uh, new clips for channel event. It's going to be the display name. Delete this. And I can just do a big ol' await in front of there. Done. Notification of followers is the next one which is just once again redeploying out to a queue this yet yeah, we are finishing up deflux this one i think I, I can do effectively the same as as up here where i'm just redeploying out to the queue for now um until i finish the goal being get everything migrated over to um use the service bus and not the queues so let me move this over and I'm going to call this uh, notify followers of new clips. So I'll call this notify followers, create a new subscription, and now I've hit too many keys. Five, two, two, go. All right, and I'm going to bind to that queue. So this is, um, which one? Queue notify followers, right? And I'm putting onto it, what's the message? It's that string. Okay, good. Um, and it's not even a for each on this, right? I mean, it's kind of stupid to have a service bus method that has one thing in it, but um, because I'm I'm still kind of migrating, move this over and I'll change it so that the method that actually does this is sitting here, right? So I'm I'm building that abstraction up. Um, C data broadcaster ID. So this is going to be uh, this uh, channel ID. That. There we go. And we're sending that message. Done. So now I've refactored it out so that it's targeting all of these bits with the service bus. And, and my function that's actually going and getting the data is significantly shorter. Um, I thought I removed all of those. Um, <laughs> these can go away because I don't have those anymore. It's actually the same length. Is it the same length because I did this? It doesn't make sense to me. Hmm. Let me, well, let's build. Make sure that it builds. There's a question here from Jason. Let me pop this up and I'm gonna wrap this up for today and we'll do some, I'll do some testing offline. Earlier I mentioned that uh, the remove log clips logic was not targeting the right container going after dollar web. Uh, can I let you know the path? Ah, so the comment wasn't that it was um, targeting the wrong container. The, the comment was that get blob client here is going after it is purposely managing just the storage um the static website for dollar web here but there's other caches that would be good to use this same utility class to work with including cache and followers so maybe um in addition to blob path, we have an enumeration here that allows you to say get blob client for the web, get blob client for, uh, and actually this is a private method. Um, right, but maybe we, we pass in the enumeration from the outside so that it says what type of 
of cash we're generating here be, because right the the writing of this content should be pretty easy to do and centralizing it here i think is is the right technique that we want um we can just do a little refactoring to make this a little bit more general purpose yeah so it's it's a good architecture here and let's just replace all of the blob interactions with it with that so um i believe that built properly right um clip updated event why don't you why you know like this build succeeded fantastic there it is awesome i am going to wrap this up i am going to call this a day let's check this into source control um so i'm going to add there's my new event and the update to the function um and we'll call this uh, refactored to use the service bus and i'll do some testing offline and get this all set to go for next time but hopefully what this has done is it's now allowed us to scale the ability for us to receive new new clips and load them out appropriately so ah sorry indos it's okay we'll be back tomorrow over on the visual studio channel let me head over let me head over to the uh uh to the main desk let's yeah let's go take a look over there all right over here and uh yeah we're we're gonna wrap it up and call it a day it it's there's some distraction here yeah for sure we covered a lot today we merged in a couple changes to our project tamil that is defining a new markup language that's defined by just tabs and carriage returns we then jumped over we saw some of the changes that we're making to shift from using just queues to now topics and subscriptions inside of a service bus that's going to hopefully allow us to scale and put more functions out there listening and interacting with the the huge number of clips that we expect to be receiving more quickly regenerating caches and making clip talk then more responsive when things happen on twitch thank you so much for watching everybody i hope you check out clip talk k-l-i-p-t-o-k.com that's the project we've been working on here on stream i'm going to be releasing source code for a subset of version of content over on uh, on github um, that'll be publicly made available but these changes that we made to support the service bus are going to be made available they will be published so that folks can check that out later um, really appreciate you tuning in and uh, we'll make this video like all my other videos available over on YouTube I'm gonna publish five to six more videos again this week and and get them rolling get more of those rolling out the 425 show is on fantastic let's uh let's get ready to visit them i'm gonna check the big twitch tv network here and let's set up that raid yeah clip talk it is that's where we're working it's going to be it's going to be a really cool service when when we're ready to launch here in just a few weeks uh you say the 425 show is up where are they at what channel? Why am I not seeing? 425 show. There we are. Yeah, let's go raid our friends at the 425 show. There's the raid queue. Um, oh, yeah. He isn't going to know what's hitting him. Oh, yeah. Get ready, friends. Christos is over there. And I will see you tomorrow for another C-Sharp with C-Sharp Fritz. Take care.